Way of the Dragon by Miguel Concepcion on February 10, 2018, 12 p.m. Of all the Sega properties still relevant this decade, none have had the staying power of Ryuji Gotoku, which translates to like a dragon. The series is more commonly known in the West as Yakuza. Compared to the wildly inconsistent Sonic franchise and the infrequent releases of Valkyria Chronicles sequels, Yakuza emerged as the most prolific series for the Japanese developer-publisher in its post-hardware era. If you count remasters, remakes, and spin-offs some of which have never come out in the West Rio Giego Toko has averaged slightly more than one release every year since its introduction in 2005. As Yakuza, the series hits a milestone in 2018 as the story arcade of its mainstay protagonist, Kazuma Kiryu reaches its conclusion in Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. We thought this would be a fitting time to look back on this franchise in our history of series. A well-planned debut. Yakuza was the brainchild of Sega veteran Toshihiro Nagoshi, the hard-as-nails director behind Daytona and Super Monkey Ball. He envisioned a gritty drama complemented by a sense of humanity in both its storytelling and characters. The game would revolve around the Japanese criminal underworld of the Yakuza, exploring the power struggles between rival groups as well as their tenuous relationships with foreign organizations. The Yakuza's fixation to their code of honor would play a huge part in the series' many stories. How its key characters adhere to or struggle with this code led to some of Yakuza's most compelling narrative moments. Development began as Project J where Nagoshi assembled a team of Sega developers proficient in both arcade games like Virtua Fighter and Super Monkey Ball as well as more story-driven consoles titles like Panzer Dragoon and Jet Set Radio. Nagoshi's team needed a setting befitting a Japanese mafia tale. They settled on Kabukiko, the red-light district of Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward, for their inspiration. Fictionally renamed as Kamurocho, this lively but modestly sized open world would become a staple location of every mainline Yakuza sequel. Much of the city's immense staying power is thanks to its similarities to its real-life counterpart, this sense of virtual tourism would permeate through all of the series' other locales. And like avid travelers revisiting Japan, fans upon revisiting Kamurocho in sequels would notice and appreciate both the clear and subtle changes to the landscape as storefronts disappear or relocate. The moment you start a new Yakuza and the initial exposition gives way to free roaming, you feel like you've returned to a theme park you haven't visited in years, wondering what has changed, whether that's an renovated batting center or a new selection of arcade titles at Club Sega.